more feasible here for us. So, um, but yeah, it's good to have everybody here. I'll turn it over to Mark. What I'm going to ask Mark to do here is, um, we, we talked a little bit about this one here as well, but what I'm going to ask Mark to do is um, just share like what he, what three things he wanted everybody to take away from yesterday. Um, and then kind of just open it up for everyone else to ask any follow-up questions and things like that. His topic was on game management. Uh, and, I, and it was very interesting to see some of the slides and notes that were brought about uh, to me uh, to get to, to see what exactly Mark talked about. But Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you here now and let you go uh, and just kind of talk about, you know, the three major concepts or the three major things you wanted people to take away from your presentation last night. Yeah, absolutely, Stu. Thank you so much for the invitation. And it's great to, to be able to talk with everybody. This is a groundbreaking half hour. Uh, and I wish uh, Little League senior leadership was on the, uh, the Zoom call as well so they could see that we truly can cross regions and, and, and work together as opposed to uh, stay within our uh, lines of demarcation. And, and uh, you know, a lot of what we do is, is, is fluid and, and we do it together and, and to not have that opportunity or that ability to work together just, just makes no sense. And I know, Stu, I'm preaching to the choir when I, when I have those conversations with you. Um, as far as yesterday's presentation, first of all, we had uh, 440 people on the call, which was pretty impressive. And uh, uh, three takeaways. Uh, takeaway number one is, is, is pretty simple. Um, we have a role as volunteer Little League umpires, and, and that is to, to be role models, positive role models, and to do everything that we can to make sure that at every opportunity, we are doing everything we can to um, uh, teach positive life skills to children. Um, we need positive, we need strong leaders. And, and I think uh, that is an important role that we take on, whether we're on the field, whether before the games or whether after the games. Um, I think uh, because we have a different mindset, which is probably uh, uh, point number two, because we have a different mindset, that mindset being that we're the only ones in the entire park, in the entire location, who doesn't care who wins. Uh, that's our role as umpires. Um, our role is to be balanced. Our role is to find equity. Our role is to make sure that, that both teams have a level playing field uh, to, to win, lose, make their own uh, determinations during the game. And, and, and as a group of, as that third team out there who comes with a different mindset of not What happened? Oh, I'm not sure. We kind of lost Mike Mark's uh, Mark. We've lost your your audio. Uh -oh. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hear. Okay, we just yeah, got that training. <clears throat> okay. I think having that training is incredibly important, and you just don't walk out on a field. And, and, and become a good game manager as an umpire. Um, and it is what sets umpires apart. Uh, most, if not all of us, can become good ball strike umpires, good safe out umpires. We can learn those mechanics. Um, but to be a good game manager, to be able to know how to speak to managers and coaches, how to diffuse situations, when to use body language, when to use voice inflection, is something that is learned over time and through experience. Yeah, it's, it's all great stuff. Mark, I think we lost you uh, in, in your audio um, between your, your different mindset talk about like the third team. And then we pick back up on you on uh, when you started talking about us and our role as game managers. So I don't know if you remember what you talked about in between those two uh, comments, uh, but we just lost your audio in that one and couldn't hear what you. What no, you no, no problem. No problem at all. No problem at all. I think what, do I, what I was getting to in point number two is we have a unique role in the fact that we are the only ones out there who don't care who wins. And, and because of that, um, we come with a different perspective as far as being able to find that equity and to find that balance. And while all around us is going crazy, be that calming influence out there and in that role, be a positive influence on the youth that we are, that's, that are watching us, uh, our every move and how we handle things and, and, and how we deal with certain situations. So that was, that was the point number two. So so essentially it's, 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 we don't care who wins and we have a different perspective there. Um, we, we have to make sure that we are projecting those positive life lessons to children that hopefully will make them better adults. 
and and the third part of it being that that game management skills just doesn't happen. It it, it has to come with training. It comes with mentoring. It comes with watching others uh, fail and succeed uh, in in different aspects of the game. Cool, and, and I think a lot of that stuff that Mark just shared in those three major takeaways really really important um, because. Um, a lot of us, although, you know, what Mark shared is definitely stuff that we've reflected upon and thought about and, and probably explains why exactly we do what we do. Um, oftentimes we can lose sight of that uh, in the middle of competing with ourselves and becoming better umpires um, in, in the middle of a lot of frustrations between you know, our various roles in Little League and things like that, too. So I think um, I think I think everyone there should should uh, kind of go back to that grounding place to find some youth and at least some some uh, refresh, especially here in 2020 in, in, in reminders of what we, uh, what we do. Um, I'm going to lead things off with a, with a question. I know Rich just dropped some and a couple other different people dropped one off too in that chat. So as more come up, um, I'm going to give you a question here, Mark, to talk about. You mentioned in that last point about game management skills. Um, and if you can identify just a couple of what you have seen as like the most especially in evaluating umpires at, at your regional who you pass on to either that regional or World Series umpires, what have kind of been the, the major manage, game management skills that um, basically proved to you that somebody is ready to jump from, you know, whether it's state to regional or regional to World Series? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And I, and I think humility is probably the first, the, the, the one I look for most. Um, uh, that umpire who walks out there, who wants to be in charge as opposed, and we talked about this last night, that umpire who walks out there who wants to be in charge as opposed to being in control um, is an umpire who still needs work. Um, I don't want an umpire who goes out there who wants to be in charge. I want an umpire who goes out there and is going to be in control of situations and, and, and also realize that none of us are perfect. Uh, we, are, we, we fail. How do you deal with that failure? How, uh, do you project it onto somebody else? Do you accept it and, and work through it with your personality traits and with your skills? Uh, those are the things I'm looking for in, in an umpire. And I'm also looking for an umpire who understands that they truly are role models, uh, whether they want to be or not. Uh, they've taken on a leadership position that puts them in the eye of the storm, so to speak, to be that role model. And I wanna see an umpire that's working. I wanna see an umpire that works from the minute they walk on the field to the minute they walk off the field. Uh, too many umpires believe that uh, when that third out is made in a half inning, that it's time to relax for one minute. Unfortunately, they're usually relaxing for five minutes, which is a question, which is an issue all to itself. Uh, but I want to see an umpire who takes that job seriously, but seriously to the point where they're also approachable. They're human beings. Um, they understand and grasp what we're trying to accomplish. Um, this is not a baseball or softball program that we're involved in. It's a leadership program that we're involved in. We use baseball and softball as the vehicle to teach those life lessons to children that we hope will make them better adults. That's the individual I'm looking for. Great answer there. And I think we share a lot of that in, in the central region, especially those of you guys who have come through uh, the Little League Regional. I, I've been able to, to hear that too. So it's great to hear that we're all on the same page. I'm going to get to a couple questions here because there's some really good ones in the chat. Uh, first comes to us from Rich Condry, who is in, uh, in just outside the Indianapolis area. Um, says he works with a few umpires that seem to relish the ejection of managers. Um, what is the best way as a leader to diffuse a partner or work with someone like that who seems to be walking on the field looking for an ejection? Yeah, uh, great question. And I will tell you that the, 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 we can't express how important that parking lot meeting is before the ball game. Uh, to establish a mindset, to, to work with that partner and, and have those sometimes because you've worked with them very often, a difficult conversation about reminding what's the objective, why are we here, what are we looking to accomplish? Um, you know, uh, to, to, the, to the question and to the point, it's a lot easier to eject than it is to keep in. Um, and, and, and to be honest with you, I've had situations where I've almost turned it into a little internal game between the umpires. In other words, hey guys, if we are dealing with a situation today where you're ready to object, eject, excuse me, why don't you, uh, let's see how easy it is or, or, or what we can do to turn that around and, and keep that manager in the game. Um, let's use our skills and, and what we can do to keep, you know, the, almost make it a little competition about, hey, you know, you ejected, that's almost like a point against you. What did you do to try and defuse the situation? 
hey, let's be honest. There are situations and, and that come up in the game where um, a, a, a participant has crossed the line and they need to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I've always said is I, I don't, e- I've never ejected. This is my 45th year of umpiring in, in Little League. I've never had an ejection. They've ejected themselves and I facilitated their ability to leave the field. Um, and I'm sure that, that y- y- you probably preach that same thing. Um, but I pride myself in trying to use all of my skills to figure out how best I can keep somebody in a ball game within the confines of where my line is as far as, 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 as reaching it and, 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 and overstepping it. Yeah. Rich, I think that's a great question. And I think Mark's answer is head on, like, you know, that, that pregame conference to really, you know, as a leader, if you kind of think about it, the same as a, a coach uh, would give a pregame speech to his players to set in a mindset, the right way of focus, energy, and, and attacking things. We're, we're essentially doing the same thing. And, you know, just as you as a coach would not want a player to have an attitude of like sabotaging your, your, your opportunity to try and win a game. Same would be true there. I think Mark's question, uh, what can we do to keep this guy in the game is, is a pretty good question of flipping it back on there. So just that taking advantage of that leadership opportunity um, in the pregame conference and then sometimes working during the game when he, you know, when tensions get, get high and things like that is really important too as well. So good question there. I think really good answer. Um, and I'll tell you, Stu, we, we, I'll, I'll tell you, Stu, we, we, we hear it in the parking lot. We hear <laughs> our partners look at us and say, I'll tell you, that coach manager looks at me wrong. He is gone today. I'm not dealing with any of his crap. And it's like, okay, timeout. Let's have yeah. a discussion. Let's, 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 let's work together. Let's figure it out. And, and that's where you can use your, your skills in that parking lot meeting to have those conversations. Yeah, I've, I've got the good fortune of uh, working with the same partner. He's actually a, a sophomore in college. Uh, his name's Noah Williams here in Columbus. Uh, he goes to the Ohio State University. But, um, you know, we always joke, we're usually there about an hour, hour and a half before a game, before a regular rec game. And uh, it's always, and I know a lot of you guys feel the same way, it's always the best part of my day. And the time that it's not the best part of my day is the day that I don't need to be there at that particular time. So whatever you've got to do to get yourself in that mindset, I think is real important. But at the same time, you know, that energy and that mindset itself, to Mark's point, is also infectious. And as leaders, it's our job to make sure that our crew and our team is on that same path. So I think that's a really, really good point. Um, I'm going to pass it down to Adam's next question. Adam is a, a preacher in Kentucky. He asked this when he said, what would be an expected response from a little league, uh, from little league and also from umpires? If we encounter a situation such as what happened in the Texas high school football game recently, uh, Adam, if you could just real quick uh, update us on what you saw, because I'm not aware of it, and then we'll go ahead and, and handle that question. Yeah, so I think it happened within the last two or three days. Uh, there was a yes. high football playoff game Thursday uh, night. Thursday night, okay, where a player from one of the teams was ejected for receiving two unsporting like uh, unsportsmanlike penalties. Um, Right after his ejection was announced by the referee, he rushed back onto the field and just tackled the referee, uh, for lack of better. Uh, he he was escorted off the field by police officers, but um, to my knowledge, no like charges or anything like that have been done. But I guess my what would what would we expect the response? You know, Little League International, but also you know from umpires that are, are part of the game when that happens, I mean, is that a point in the game where, you know, it's a forfeit, we're done, we're, we're leaving, everybody's going home and cool off the rest of the day or, or finish the game in this situation, they finished the game. In fact, the, the kid that the kid whose team uh, was affected by this actually ended up winning the game. And so there they'll be advancing further on in the playoffs. Yeah. Mark, I'll, I'll yeah. go ahead. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great question. And, and I'm not going to suggest any, uh, response from Little League International. I'll let them answer that themselves. I would suggest to you that as, let's put that in the context of a Little League game, uh, should that unfortunate situation happen. If it's my game, if I'm on the field as an umpire, that game's over. Um, I am not going to continue that game because nothing good can happen. Uh, it's, a, it's a heightened uh, stress situation. Um, there's probably a lot of volatility that still is existing. Uh, from one side or the other, uh, every call you make from that point forward, you're, you, you can't win in that situation. I'm going to suspend the game. I don't forfeit games as a, as a volunteer Little League umpire. Um, I suspend games and they're referred to the board of directors. Um, I will tell you from a personal standpoint, 
Um, I am going to pursue that with every ounce in my body, uh, legally and through the uh, law enforcement. Um, we unfortunately in our society have too many situations where it, it becomes a, an excusable conduct. Um, oh, he's a good kid. Uh, he just was out of control. Um, and that may be the case and that may be wonderful. I'm going to let the authorities make that decision. Um, I cannot, I, I just, with every ounce in my body, I cannot stand by and just, um, um, poo poo a situation like that and, and, and just chalk it up to, uh, to competition. Um, I think societally we are, uh, that's a microcosm, unfortunately, of what's going on in our society. And again, as a leader, as somebody who wants to teach those positive aspects to, to, to the participants, um, part of that is making people and keeping people accountable. You know, and, and to, to add on to that, when I think that's like the physical here and now, and, and to, to go back to one of Mark's major points, you know, he talked about us being role models. And you know, there's certain situations that happen in a game where you playing the game is no longer important for us to do. And that would be definitely one of them. Uh, but at the same time, I would just encourage us uh, to be aware of, uh, you know, because a lot of times we're working in the same league often, or at least in the same leagues often. And uh, my, my guess is that coaches probably saw such behavior of that player uh, signifying that something like that, and maybe not to that magnitude, but you know, there would be something to be aware of. So I think, you know, as, as we continue to work, we don't want to, we don't want to, you know, be petty by any stretch of the imagination too, but we've also kind of got to have a barometer on us um, to make sure that the environment that we are, we, we are structuring for these young people um, is, is pure uh, because essentially the product on the field, especially with 12 year olds, and it's as pure as the game gets. And that's something from somebody that coaches college athletics too. Like it, it is as pure as it can po possibly get. And as long as we can do what we need to do uh, without being petty and, and over, overly involved, uh, but to make sure that environment is what it needs to be is, is something that we, we have the duty to do just as coaches, uh, league officials and everyone else involved uh, do as well. Stu, I think that's a phenomenal point. That situation did not just happen. And what I mean by that is there had to have been in my mind, and I don't know all the facts, but I have to believe that at some point throughout the game or at some point prior to that quote unquote attack, there was a buildup happening um, that hopefully officials become aware of as it's happening um, and try again, using great, great, great game management skills to use those skills to diffuse, to, uh, to uh, reduce, to decrease that potential volatility until unfortunately it came to a head and, and, and caused the, uh, the physical assault that it did. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a situation that hopefully none of us ever have to endure. But, you know, like you said, Mark, societally, like it's drifting that way. And we see more and more, especially with uh, social media and things like that, it becomes more and more prevalent, unfortunately. I'll go to George, George's question because his is a little bit more, um, even more so game management. He talks about between innings. And I think this is really important for a lot of people trying to advance up through Little League. And then even for people who are, uh, you know, local league UICs, uh, district UICs, or whatever the case may be. Um, uh, George asks, um, most, time, most wasted time occurs between innings. What are some good do's and don'ts uh, to keep the game moving between innings? Yeah, a great question. Uh, uh, do's and don'ts. And, and I agree. I mean, I, I have people calling me all the time. Mark, we uh, our, our games are three and a half hours long and we're only getting two full innings in. <laughs> and I go out and I watch and I go, oh, I see why. OK, first of all, start on time. Start on time. If the game starts at five o'clock. First pitch at five o'clock. Get all the admin stuff done uh, before uh, before we're ready to, to throw pitch one and put that ball in play at five o'clock. Number two. Do not spend in between innings meeting with your partners. There's no reason for that to happen. Uh, as a base umpire, get to your rest position, stay in your rest position, and hustle to your position when it's time to send the ball down. As a plate umpire, get to your rest position. Make sure that you're getting uh, substitutions as quickly as possible. Make sure that all that administrative work is done uh, move with a purpose, clean off the plate, put your mask on, get in your position and put the ball in play. Um, uh, there's too much banter 
that goes unnecessary banter that goes on. And what I see in the biggest culprits are base umpires who all of a sudden decide it's time to go hang out at the backstop with the plate umpire. And, and boy, one minute becomes four minutes very quickly. And if you take four minutes and you times it by each half inning, you've, you've just killed yourself with a half hour or 45 minutes of, of dead time. So those are the quickest things to do. Um, keep your eyes and ears open. If a manager, you see him coming towards you, obviously he probably wants to make a change, uh, you know, and go, go get that change and work with that manager or coach to get those changes as quickly as possible. If they have a question in between innings, walk up, get that done, get all that preliminary stuff. That's why in between innings, you have to keep working. That is not a one minute rest period and adhere to the one minute. Uh, get those, get those players moving. Hey, let's go. Here we go. Let's hustle. Let's go on the field. Let's go. Hey, that away number seven, that away to work hard for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. And that'll, that breeds itself. If you project it, they will follow it. If you're going to be lazy, if you're going to be a uh, 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 non-caring, if you're not going to move with a purpose, what makes you think the participants are going to do that? Yeah, a couple of great points there that I want to come back and circle back to. I think, you know, in last night's presentation, you mentioned facilitating game flow. And I think this is absolutely the number one thing we can do to facilitate that game flow. And especially as many of us who are, you know, trying to work our ways up or even trying to mentor younger umpires, the, the concept of rest position, I think, is really important to put. Like, um, you know, there are times where, you know, you need a drink and it's OK to get a drink. But I kind of use the, the rule of thumb that. You know, once the inning's over, if I'm working the plate, I'm going to go to the backstop, get my water. And probably by the time that the, the offense comes off and the defense starts to come on, like that's probably about a 20 second interval. Like I don't need much more than 20 seconds to get a quick swig in and get back to where I need to be. And then I'm almost always on the foul line. And the same is true with my base umpire. If he'll come start to uh, start to talk to me and things like that. You know, I'll start to count pitches like on my hands so that non-verbally he sees what I'm doing. Or I'll just straight ask him like, hey, how many pitches has he thrown? And that way he knows like, hey, I've got five pitches here or whatever it might be to help limit myself uh, in that between innings times. And then even as a base umpire, DJ, I know I've worked a ton with you over, over your development. Phil, you're on the call. We work a ton together, too. Uh, as a base umpire, if my plate umpire is, is taking a little while, you'll see me out there with like a thumbs up or like one of these numbers like, hey, we're good to go um, to, to get things going. And, uh, generally that, that gets things going too. So I think our nonverbals, uh, in our resting positions are just as important as making sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing in between innings. Um, and, and, and Stu, gonna, again, we're going to have that, uh, Stu, again, we're going to have that conversation in the parking lot. Yep. Uh, that's part of my discussion. Hey, let's make sure we stay away from each other in between innings. Let's keep the game moving. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Just a reminder for us. Just a reminder for us. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, I've got a question, Gerard, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, so as, as I mentioned earlier on, Gerard leads the uh, umpires at the um, Intermediate World Series out there in Livermore. And uh, I started with one of the questions that, um, you know, I, I, give the, I gave to Mark about game management. And basically, you've listened to two guys, myself and Mark, uh, who do a lot of um, evaluating at the regional level. But Gerard manages umpires at the World Series level. And obviously, he's got to make certain decisions as to who places where and things like that, uh, just as we do. Uh, but a different context because it's a World Series. So, Gerard, when umpires arrive to you at, at the World Series level, um, what, what are some things that you are, you are looking or hoping for out of an umpire in terms of game management? Like what, what skills, what specific things are you looking for that says, all right, I know I got a good one here. I think you're muted, Gerard. Let's see if I can unmute you. Is that better? Can yep, you hear there me? you are now. All right. Um, number one, I, I, I really appreciate being a being a part of this, and um, Stu for facilitating this, and 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 Mark for what you did last night. Last night was really awesome. It's a uh, a great opportunity. Hopefully, people in other parts of the world um, either got in or will have this as a resource. Um, as the difference between a regional in, in a World Series and within this group of 25 volunteer Little League dedicated umpires, there are two of you who have come to Livermore and, and, and been a part of uh, what we do. Um, 
I feel my job is to not, I mean, to, to make it as comfortable as I can, uh, to be as objective and, and, and can candid and upfront as, as I can. Um, and obviously to put the person with, with the most skills um, on the field when it, when it really counts. And that's what's really hard. I mean, it's hard for any assigner to do that part of the thing. And I don't, I don't dwell on it. Um, I do it relatively objectively. Um, and there, I'm open to discussion, but you know, once it's done, I usually don't change. Um, and the other thing about, about um, what I do in Livermore is um, everybody gets to work. We put six on the field for every game. So there is a maximum effort. Uh, when Stu came um, in 2013, being part of the inaugural crew, um, there were 12 umpires. So there were six and six and, and, and there wasn't a whole guy. Uh, a couple years later, uh, Williamsport added another one. So we had 13, which is an odd number and it's a little bit harder, but it was doable. Uh, we did have a rotating um, hole guy. And two years, two years ago, for me, it was the best. We had 14 umpires. So we had seven and seven. And, and the rotate of the hole guy, I, there were seven umpires in that particular crew for each of the 14 games so that everybody got a plate and everybody got got um, the other assignments and it just rotated from there. So hopefully that's a feel for um, particularly what, what I do in one of the baseball world series. I've been privy to two softball world series and um, you know, the, Things are done um, as that particular umpire signer uh, coordinator wants to do it. So that's kind of kind of my take. Yeah, I thought Gerard uh, touched on a lot of things there, and, and I think being comfortable is a big part of it, and, and that comes from confidence, especially in your ability to manage a game uh, and, and, and helping umpires be comfortable. I think it's a big thing we can do, and again, and, and as, as people who are oftentimes are not only working ourselves up and trying to experience some great things, but also lead people, I think that's a huge part of it, is, is what can I do, and this goes back to Mark's point, too, about trying to keep people in games, is you know, as umpires, you know, our, our job is also not only to, to umpire officially and, and things like that, but to, um, to, to make people feel comfortable, I think is a big part of it too, so that their skills uh, can come out for us. And, and that goes a whole lot in, in, our, in our ability of game management. And as simple uh, as the topic of game management can sound, uh, it, it's without question, undoubtedly one of the most intangible skills we can have as umpires to work our ways up. Um, placing personnel is not always easy to do. Um, and, and uh, you know, and th that's true with us as we talk about the regional level and things like that. And then uh, Gerard touched on another one, effort. And, and it's not necessarily wasted effort or, or fake effort, um, but, you know, intentional, um, efficient means of, of what we're doing, I think is a big part uh, of the types of skills that, you know, generally get people to where they want to go. And I think that's important for not only us in our aspire and our aspirations in this avocation, but also as we try to help train and develop other people as well uh, to think about the same way. So, yes, yeah, Stu, uh, I would, I would, I would tell you, Stu, I, I really respect what Gerard does at the World Series level. And I'll tell you why my involvement in the World Series is in, in the past, either assisting and evaluating or, or things of that nature at the regional level, especially there, there, there's, there's two differences that I think are, are, are paramount between the two. Number one, regionals are more community-based. And what I mean by that is when the umpires show up for a regional, they usually at least have identified or know one another to some extent. They've been to clinics together. They, they've, uh, they may be, uh, you know, the Northern California guys and the Southern California guys may have had an opportunity to work games together. Maybe they went out to Arizona. Maybe they went out to Nevada and they worked together. Um, so there is at least an understanding of who everybody is. Um, at the World Series level, man, you're bringing together uh, 14 individuals who have no idea who, who each other are, except for maybe if you have two from the same region or something like that. 
And the second part of that is, and 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 uh, one of the things that Stu knows about me is I'm 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 frank, and uh, sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes that's a bad thing. But there's a lot, from my experience, there's a lot more ego involved at the World Series level from umpires who show up. Uh, you know, it, it's all that that looking up and down each other and going, you know, at the barbecue. Hey, I'm better than that guy. It's like, how do you possibly know that? But there is that ego that you have to get past. I made the World Series. I'm at the World Series. You can't critique me. You can't evaluate me. You can't tell me anymore because I've already reached the pinnacle. So I have a lot of respect for what Gerard does. I have a lot of respect for what they do at the uh, at the Little League World Series in Williamsport. Um, it's it's a completely different mindset when you bring that group of umpires together as opposed to what Stu you and I do at the regional level on a year to year basis. Yeah, great point. And I think that that's some interesting stuff. You gave me an idea for you know future um, uh, conversations, and that, and that is ego and, and not only the difference between a regional and World Series umpire, but just the experiences in general. I think are pretty interesting. So I'm glad we've we've kind of gone down that path. Um, in the conversation of game management, because ultimately game management is what's going to make you either stay at a regional level or go to a World Series level, too. But I think that whole concept of ego and, and understanding what it takes to succeed at the regional versus the World Series to not necessarily different um, playing fields, but definitely something to, to address here uh, for many people as well. So. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. We're, we're, we're starting to get uh, into it. Uh, I appreciate uh, Mark and, and Gerard for being on and all you guys for being on. And hopefully uh, you, you got something here from today. And as I mentioned, I think game management and, and Mark did a fantastic job last night. And then even today, picking apart some of your guys' questions, which were great. Um, at, at just how important game management is, because it's a little thing that basically amounts to our identity and our reputation as umpires. Uh, and not only is the mentality important for us to make sure we keep in mind to stay grounded in what we're doing and stay humble in what we're doing, uh, but it's also to make sure that we understand the importance of what we're doing, not only for ourselves in this avocation, but more importantly then uh, for the people that we go ahead and serve. Uh, next week, um, I, I've got a, um, I'm on for the wedge presentation at home plate on Tuesday at eight o'clock. That's a little league presentation. So uh, register through the umpire registry for that. And then I'll circle back on Friday again next week at 1230 uh, Eastern time um, and, and have some stuff just as Mark did kind of open it up for the field of questions. Uh, so if you're watching when we go through uh, stuff on on Tuesday of next week about the wedge at home plate, which many of you guys have learned uh, from us anyway. Uh, but, you know, feel free to ask that stuff. And, and that's what these sessions are designed to do is to be kind of open ended follow ups. Uh, to to those uh, conver to those clinics that we're having. So uh, again, two, Tuesday at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern, I'll be on with Little League to talk about Wedge at the Plate. We'll be back on Friday here on the Zoom call at 12.30 to recap that one. And then the following week, uh, I've got one on Wedge on the bases and we'll do the same to wrap things up before heading into the week before Christmas. So appreciate you guys being here. I've got about less than a minute here left. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Happy holidays to everyone. And I look forward to seeing everybody then uh, hopefully next week. Take care, guys. Thanks, Thank Stu. you very much. Thanks, Thanks Stu. Stu. Yep. See you guys.